Hello, and I'm your host, Eric Balger, and welcome to MCTV Live's 135th episode spectacular. And I'm Keisha Corso, and on today's show, we have a Valentine's Day news report, a cold weather news report, a Grammy Oscar special, and a cheerleading news report. Yeah, all our reporters worked really hard on all these pieces here. They only had a few days to do them, but they did a really good job did, on and them. And it's all from our MCTV class. Yes, because uh, Mr. Bowerstein wanted to try out a new system, so it really worked. But first off, on today's show, we have our uh, opening credits done by uh, our very own Cam McLeod here on MCTV Live. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Derek, those are some awesome credits. Yeah, they are. They're really well done. So t up first today on our show, we have our uh, Valentine's Day news report done by myself and my uh, partner, Mike Puff. We went out last week and got some good footage of all the Valentine Week events. Were a lot of people happy with all the events that they were having? Oh, yeah. Everyone was happy. Everyone was having a good time. We talked to a lot of people and uh, got some pretty good interviews. Oh. So, did you have a good Valentine's Day, Derek? Yeah, I did. So, let's go to our uh, piece now here on MCTV Live. This past week at MCHS, it was a Valentine's theme week. We had five days of fun and interesting events. Okay, I'm here with Luke England and BJ Peterson, the two grade 10 bachelor auctions. How's it going, BJ? I'm going pretty good, pretty good. How about you, Luke? <sighs> so, how's it feel to be the grade 10 bachelors? Yeah, it feels good. You know, and I just want to thank my mom for uh, sending me out today. Uh, She's she been real good to me. You want to thank your mom for sending you out today? I want to thank her for my good looks. That's right. Oh! I'm beautiful. Okay, thank you, boys. I'm here with uh, Sean Shimka and Dane Vischer, the grade 11 bachelors today. How's it going, guys? It's going pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. That's uh, good. How's it feel to be uh, the grade 11 representatives at the bachelor auction today? Well, I'm used to kind of being a, kind of a ladies' man and all the ladies after me, so it's just kind of normal for me right now. Oh, I'm shocked. Uh, I'm shocked. That's good. Thanks, guys, and good luck at the auction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm here with the two auctioneers, Candace and Lisa. What do you two think of today's uh, crowd of bachelors up for auction? They're pretty good looking. How do you think the crowd will respond to today's bachelors? I hope they buy them. Well, they should have brought a lot of money because we told them to you a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, good. That Thanks, ladies. I'm back here with uh, BJ Peterson and Luke England. They just got auctioned off for a whopping $3. How does that feel, guys? Amazing. It hurts. Oh. <laughs> Why does it hurt, BJ? I thought it was better than $3. Come on. I'll, I'll, at least like 350. Yeah. 350. Come on. He's more of a chick. What, what is this, man? Three bucks on golf for now? In the hood, I was worth million. They can, <laughs> they can put a price on that. Okay, thank you, boys. Okay, I'm here with uh, Kim Rucci and Sean Shimka. Kim here just bought uh, Sean for 15 bucks. How's it feel to have Sean Shimka? Oh, it's great. 
How's it for you, Sean? Well, I thought I'd go for a little higher. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. I got, a, I got a good girl here. How much higher do you think you go, Sean? I thought I was going up to like the Grand Region, but obviously not. I know we got some big spenders here, Sean, but too bad it just wasn't your day, huh? I guess not, Derek. I guess not. Thanks. Okay, I'm here with Miss Krulak and Miss Schwetz, who just bought these gentlemen for thirty-three dollars. Handsome gentlemen for thirty-three dollars. How does it feel to have bought these guys for thirty-three? Well, I think I got a real bargain because I thought I was just getting James for thirty-three, but now I find out I have three of them, so it is the bargain. It's kind of like when you go to Superstore or Costco and you get the bulk deal, so they're kind of a discount price. And they are bulky. We I'm worth the full price, yeah. though. You guys. So, do you guys have lots of hard labor planned for these three gentlemen? <laughs> I was thinking cupboards. I'm not sure what they were thinking. Let's just say it's convenient that family day is coming up. Okay, good. Thanks, you guys. Valentine's Week included on the Monday, Matching Hearts. Tuesday, Finding Nemo in the Gym. On so Derek, can you feel, feel the spring coming? Yeah, this weather's awesome. It puts me in a good mood. But do you know who knows the w weather better than the weatherman? Um, I have no idea. Well, our weather person, Amanda Archer, knows the weather better than anyone. Does she? She's, she's new, isn't she? Yeah. She's taking the place of Josh this week. We decided that uh, it was too warm in here for us, so we sent her outside. So uh, let's go live to Amanda Archer outside right now on MCTV. Thank you, Derek and Keisha. Those are some great Valentine's Day activities. It's four degrees out here, but it doesn't feel like it because the wind chill makes it pretty cold. Um, well, we're going to go to a piece on cold weather and coming up next. But for, uh, it's about warm weather, actually, and it's with uh, Josh Cust. Stay tuned for, stay tuned for uh, later on in the show, and I'll be doing the five-day forecast. Here's Warm Weather by Josh Cust. Like conditions. This week is like spring. Because of the warm weather, it looks like there'll be no more winter in the future. The warm temperature should last for the next two weeks. After that, it'll be March, so there won't be any more cold weather. The warm conditions also lead to dirty vehicles, which leads to rust. Well, I think it's uh, it's kind of getting a little rough on the cars with all the salt and stuff. Uh, going on to your, uh, onto your cars and start rust and stuff. It's no good for the newer cars. Because of the warm weather, activities emerge such as skateboarding, BMXing, and rollerblading. This is Amanda Archer reporting for MCTV Wow, the weather's looking really great. But you know what else is looking great, Derek? What? Oh, what's that, Keisha? All the people who are going to the Grammys this year and to the Oscars. Yeah, Luke England and uh, Jordan Blackburn put together a little piece here about uh, their predictions of who's going to take all the Oscars and Grammys home this year. Mm. So who's your favorite star there, Keisha? Um, well, I have to say I like all kinds of music and all kinds of movies. I could never decide. What about you? Well, me personally, I'm a huge Luke England fan. He's uh, one of our upcoming stars on MCTV, so let's go to his piece right now. Oh yeah, this is Big L Dog up on MCTV Live, new studio. Yeah, they always send the best of the best out to do some of the hardest work, and that's why me and Jordan over here got the job. All right, we're going to be reviewing the Academy Awards and seeing who won and took away the Grammys. All right, Outkast and Beyonce doing some real good performances there. They took away the show and some past winners. Uh, alternative music album, Elephant by the White Stripes. We got the metal performance, St. Anger, Metallica. We got rap performance by duo group, Shake Your Tail Feather, Nelly featuring P. Diddy and Murphy Lee, just to review a couple. Now we're going to uh, make our predictions for the Academy Awards, and we're gonna pick our favorites for who's gonna win, right? Straight up. Right. And to start this one off, we're gonna start off with the best picture award and the nominees are the lord of the rings the return of the king lost in translation master and commander the far side of the world mystic river and sea biscuit so, who do you, you think is going to win the best picture yeah 
Yeah, I got this one covered, baby. I think the best picture award for the 2003 Academy Awards will go to the Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Fabulous movie for all ages. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The battle scene in that movie is just excellent, man. It's like the be. best one I've ever seen. If there's nothing beats it, all right? Yeah. And here's a preview for our pick. We cannot achieve victory through strength of arms. Not for ourselves. But we can give Frodo the chance. And the nominations for Best Animated Picture are... Finding Nemo! Brother Bear and... The Triplets of Belleville. And what would you say about the best animated pictures? A couple real good ones this year. What are you going to go with? Well, I would have to go with Finding Nemo because Finding Nemo is simply my favorite one out of all of those three movies. Oh, yeah, I can see real where you're going with that one. And the nominations for best actor are Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, Ben Kingsley, House of Sand and Fog, Jude Law, Cold Mountain, Bill Murray, Lost in Translation, and Sean Penn in Mystic River. Yeah, all right. For this one, me and Luke here, I think we're going to go with Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean. Great actor. He was like, like, acting all drunk and stuff the whole time. Yeah, he had the movie. He made it, it good. Was good man. Johnny Depp made this picture. He, this, this is why I like this. Number one. He is Number why one I like this picture. We'll just put it that way. I couldn't agree more. Nominated for Best Actress are Keisha Castle Hughes, Whale Rider, Diane Keaton, Something's Gotta Give, Samantha Morton, In America, Charlize Theron, Monster, and Naomi Watts in 21 Grams. Alright, an actress in a leading role, very important. You need those hotties in the movie. And we're gonna give it to Charlie's Theron. She was hot, she put on 30 pounds, now she's not. 30 pounds, putting on 30 pounds for a movie is simply amazing. I know, like, usually they have to lose weight to get into a movie, but this, like, this is just crazy. Like, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, she's couldn't say anything. Great, and she lost it too. She lost it right after the movie. Crazy, crazy. Anyways. Uh, I'd give it to her just for that. And here's a preview for our pick. You think nobody ever talked dirty to you before? I just like to settle first, you know? Me? Kill that man. What do you think? You can't kill people. That's who? People kill each other every day. Nominated for the best directors are as following. Fernando Morelli's City of God. Peter Jackson, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Sofia Coppola, Lost in Translation. Peter Weir, Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. And Clint Eastwood, Mystic River. All right, best director. Uh, one of my favorite categories, actually, other than best, best picture. Um, Peter Jackson from New Zealand. Yeah, be, uh, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Best Number movie one. out. Best movie out, out of all of these this year. Uh, great job on that movie. He did a great jo job on all three of them, so. Just couldn't do it without the director. He's the head honcho. He does everything. Yeah, I know how, to, how it feels to be the director. And here's a preview for our pick. It was like a, this immense jigsaw puzzle that we had to somehow fit the pieces together and end up with something that felt like it was worthy of the title, The Lord of the Rings. For over a year and a half, director Peter Jackson shot all three films simultaneously, creating a timeless classic. Peter Jackson has uh, amazing energy and determination and willpower. There was something incredibly special. It felt like making something that was part of history. The experience of Lord of the Rings has reminded me and, and confirmed that uh, this actor can't survive without a very good director. Little, 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 one, one, one more take, and if you just give us some with a little bit, little bit more worry. All right, that's your entertainment buzz for the Academy Awards and the Grammys. And once again, thanks to all for watching. This is L Dog and Jay Rich giving you a big shout out. Whoa, Keisha, that piece reminds me of something. The Junos are coming to Edmonton on April the 4th. So uh, that's really cool. Are you going there, Keisha? Um, yeah, I think I am. Um, all those Canadians packed in the same building. What pride, what spirit. 
Speaking of pride and spirit, we uh, have a lot here at MCHS, and uh, Sean Shemka showed that pride on his yearbook commercial, and that's coming up next here on MCTV Live. Man, I'm really looking forward to grad. I know, me too, this is going to be fun this year. I can't wait to get a copy of that video this year. Guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there is no grad DVD this year. You're kidding, right? What are we paying you MCT guys for anyways? Well, there'll still be a grad DVD, but it's going to be a year in review. And it's just $15. That's awesome. That's the shizzle. But unfortunately, there's a catch. You gotta be kidding me. That sucks. Don't worry, guys. If you get the yearbook, you can order the DVD. Oh, I was gonna do that anyways. Yeah, no problem. No, that's a good thing, man. Oh. This year's yearbook's gonna be half in color. Talk to Miss Michael in the office. It's a shizzle! Well, the senior girls uh, finished third in their tournament, uh, but for all the rest of the sports info, let's go to our uh, sportsman over here, Sean Chimka. Um, yes, the girls did finish third place, winning three out of four games in our draw. And uh, they fought hard, and those girls sure sure gave quite a bit of effort, and like it's a job well done. Um, also, the JV girls finished second place in uh, their tournament in White Court, and uh, our curling teams are mixed boys and girling girls curling teams are all heading out to Drayton Valley to, to compete in zones. Um, actually, this weekend uh, past, we had the MCHS Wolves Men's uh, Invitational Basketball Tournament with uh, STAA finishing in first place, uh, Bow Valley finishing in second place, and um, in third place, our very own MCHS Wolves. It was it was pretty, pretty exciting for the crew down here at MCHS, you know, working hard and filming all those matches, uh, but those, those, those senior girls are sure, sure looking pretty hot. Um, actually, recently I got some uh, clips from the opening game against Fort Saskatchewan. Uh, it was an excellent game. Uh, well, here's the clips I got from the game. Starting off, the MCHS Wolves faced off against uh, Fort Saskatchewan in the opening game. Uh, the guys you really have to watch in this game are Duncan Campbell, number six, just shooting those threes like they're nothing for him. Here we go with one, right through the hoop, nothing to it for Duncan. Uh, I think they're going to try to give it back to Duncan one more time here, number six. Uh, Cliff Badger goes down the wing, dishes it out to Duncan, shoots another one. Oh, what do you know, Duncan Campbell shoots another three. Uh, then uh, Bo Valley comes in, intercepted by John. Uh, Cliff takes it, throws it down to Duncan Campbell, goes in for the layup, another two. Uh, I think it was like 10 minutes in the game and Duncan Campbell had all the, all the points for the MCHS Wolves. Why not give him one more from outside, one more three for Duncan Campbell. But watching Duncan Campbell, you got to really look at number 15, Luke England. Comes around here for the layup, goes right in the hoop, nice play. And then after that, he gets two, uh, two free throw shots, shoots the first one right in there, goes up for the second one. That's my boy, Luke England, right there. And then right at the end of the game, you, you see uh, Luke England go into the layup, steals it and goes to the layup. Awesome play. I'd say one of the best plays of the tournament for Luke England. The whole team got it, like, they're all into it and, like, just psyched up from, like, going to that. Uh, that that's it. That's it for the clips. Um, but another thing we've been seeing at our school uh, is the MCHS cheer squad put together by uh, Miss Schwetz. They had their uh, first appearance in uh, the MCHS pep rally. Uh, the pep rally was a pretty good success, I thought. Uh, the girls came out, a couple guys in there, all, all like putting everything forth and just, just going at it. You know, you know how it goes. Uh, we had Justin Putney out there looking for, uh, and he got, he shot this. This year marks the first year that there's been a cheerleading team here at MCHS. We caught up with Coach Mish Schwetz and cheerleaders Sarah Godfrey, Joel Gauthier, and Sherelle George to get their views on why they joined the team. Well, there were some students that were sort of interested, and I think they, they came to the school with the proposal, and uh, I was asked if, if I'd be willing to participate. Um, I joined because it's lots of fun. I love dancing, and I've always wanted to be a cheerleader, and it's a great experience, and yeah, it's a good team. We have lots of fun. Well, I joined basically because I heard it would be fun, and 
Um, my girlfriend kind of pushed me into it a little bit. Ms. Schwetz also told me it would be a good experience for me. Um, because I love to dance and I wanted to try something new. So I was like, hey, chill, yeah. The cheer team is always coming up with new moves. But of course, everybody has their own favorites. My favorite part is, don't, don't, the, don't I don't know, I like the dancing and the jumps because I get thrown in the air <laughs> and we're the dancers so we get to make up lots of the moves and it just lots of fun. Um, probably the dancing <laughs> and seeing everyone as a group work together. No, no, my favorite part is making new dances and just chilling, chilling with the music. Right now I'm trying to do a flip thing, it's pretty sweet. Yes, there's a performance coming up. In fact, it's next Friday, pep rally. Be there! Well, we were there, and we sent a camera out to get all the action. So here it is in its entirety, the MCHS Cheerleaders premiere at the pep rally here on MCTV. That was a lot of sports, but here at MCHS we take pride in both our academic and athletic abilities. Yeah, that was awesome, but as we promised earlier in the show, here's our uh, weather person, Amanda Archer, reporting for duty. How's it going, Amanda? Uh, not bad. We're, we're going to go over here to the uh, city forecast. Okay, in, we have it, uh, Edmonton, it's one degree Celsius. In Calgary, it's five. Banff here is three, and in Jasper, it's two. And uh, now we're going to go to our five-day forecast. Uh, Thursday is cloudy with a daily. Thursday is cloudy with a daily high of one, and a daily low of minus three. On Friday, it's cloudy with daily high of zero and a daily low of minus six. We have Saturdays cloudy with a daily high of two and a daily low of minus five. Um, our next piece is done by Caitlin Caswell and Josh Blank. It's called Mars Landing. We're all aware that just recently two space shuttles were sent up to Mars, and let's watch the piece and find out all about it. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting topic. It costs lots of money, but uh, here we go on MCTV Live. Two spacecrafts called Spirit and Opportunity. They were designed to go up and look at the history of water on Mars. Each spacecraft is equipped with a robotic arm, a drilling tool, four cameras, so they can see a 3D view of all of Mars. Spirit was successfully launched on June 10th, 2003. Opportunity was launched on July 7th, 2003, and both had landed in mid-January 2004. They used an airbag protection system to land gently and then to send off their rovers. The rovers can go about 100 meters a day completely collecting everything and being the eyes, ears, everything about the scientists. Both rovers were designed to complete seven objectives. The objectives were known as search and study for many different types of soils and rocks on the planet, make maps showing all the different types of craters, volcanoes, and that kind of stuff, what to turn in the landscape. Was it volcanoes, meteorites, wind, water? To make measurements on places of the ground that have been observed with orbiting spacecrafts, also known as true ground. 
We also want to search for iron containing mater materials which could be worked by the meteor on Earth. Identify what minerals and textures are in the rock soils and search for clues about what the environment was like, what the reaction was, that the water climate was warm, was it cold, and how was their environment compared to Earth. Several things Mars explorers are not meant to do are they are not looking for life on Mars, only for clues of an environment that could have supported life. The robots are not looking for liquid water, they're looking for traces that there was at one time in liquid water, and they are not collecting samples of Mars rock to return to Earth. NASA plans to fly a sample mission for that in 2014. There's one thing though that we're all going to be finding out, and that is, it's like for the UFO. Special announcement we would like to make. Um, all grads can get a special deal at the Mournville Hair Lodge for 100 free tanning minutes, Australian bronzer cream, and tanning glasses, all for $45. If you have any questions, you can call Brenda at the Hair Lodge, and it's only for grads, so. Yeah, that's uh, definitely interesting, but uh, that brings us to the end of our show, as it always does. But our next episode's coming on uh, March 4th. I'm the producer for this one, and so have, uh, look for some really great pieces coming up. We have music video by Justin Potney, So Far Away by Stain, Inside Scoop on Interviews, and lots more. So tune in next week. Thanks for watching.